Hey yo, and welcome to Callum's Corner. I'm sorry to rage at you, but I am, I've got a river of righteous rage flowing through me this morning. I don't think I've ever been so deeply disrespected in my life. We're worn out. It is action stations, right? So today, I finally got the day off, right? And I wanted to do something to spruce up Jeremy Corbyn's little grave. It's cold and it's stark out there. It's not befitting. It was a wonderful little pig, right? So I've gone out special and bought some bulbs to plant. I thought I'll put them in there now. You know, come springtime, they'll burst forth. It'll be beautiful. And it might even, you know, uh, uh, like um, stimulate a little bit of hope in me or something. Anyway, go out there to start preparing it, all right? Get to his grave. This cat poo on his grave. At least two, maybe three separate poos. I couldn't tell with one of them whether it's two separate poos or just one, whether it started and stopped. It looked very sad. It doesn't matter how many poos there were. One is way too many. That is like a hate crime or something, all right? Anyway, I come running in to get some gloves. I want to clear it up immediately. I get back out into the garden, all right? I look up on the wall like, behind the little trellis thing, and there is this tortoiseshell twat there staring at me with his cold reptilian eyes, all right? I react instinctively. I charge him. I rush the little twat. I can see out of brave eyes. Ah! Just want to scare him out. Let him know that this territory is taboo. I, I know it's cold outside, but I still like my guinea pigs to go out there, you know, sometimes. Like, just for like 10, 15 minutes, we'll have a little run, a bit of fresh air and some grass and stuff. Imagine the trauma they're going through right now, knowing that they've lost their fallen little comrade, little Jeremy Corbyn, and there might be a cat stalking them. I, it's now become my mission to make sure this cat does not come back into my garden. And plus, he's done a hate crime. He craps all over Corbyn's grave. It's disgusting. Anyway, I, I decide today it ends. I'm going to scare him out of this garden so he knows he can't come back in here. So I come into the kitchen, I leave the door open. I crouch down beneath the window here, just my eyes watching so he doesn't know I'm there, all right? And lo and behold, barely an hour later, he slunk back in, all right? I'm straight out there with a couple of saucepans. If you thought I was loud the first time, this was like the blitz or something. Smashing the pans together, screaming, the little pussy ran. Anyway, came back into my kitchen, made myself a cup of tea to calm myself down. It was traumatic for me, as well as the pigs, all of this, right? And then a couple of minutes later, I heard this voice calling me from over in my bloody back alley, right? I know who it is. It's this lady, right? She used to rent this place out as an Airbnb. She's like a, a lecturer at universities and stuff. She's recently retired and moved back in here. I've known about her cat and I've been worried about it. I was right to be worried. Anyway, I go out there and she's trying to confront me, all like calm and stuff. Like, I hate people like that. She's never argued with me. I want to keep it calm long. Anyway, she's going on about at, like how she's heard this commotion. She was in a conservatory having a cup of coffee. What's going on? I explained to her exactly what her cat's done and the actions I've taken to remedy the situation. All right? Rather than being apologetic about the hate crime her cat has committed, all right, she's going on about how I, I can't be doing that. All right? I said, this is my garden. I don't want your cat in my garden. It needs to stop. All right? And she's, she's going like how she wants her cat. Shay, it's called. The most middle class name I've ever heard a cat called in my life. Right? Anyway, she's going on about how she wants him to have free reign and have a, like a, a lovely, happy, untroubled little life to be able to wander where he wants. Like he's some kind of a privileged, free range chicken. That's what you want. My guinea pig is dead. That is, how cold and insensitive are you? If we all got what we wanted, you know, I, I want to film an adult movie with Kirstie Allsop. We go and she'd show me a series of different houses. Before we got there, we ditch Phil and we'd have Boom Boom at each place. We call it Polcation, Polcation, Polcation. If we all got what we wanted, bacon would grow on trees and it would make your penis grow larger. No, it doesn't matter what you want. It's, this is my garden. I don't want your cat in it. All right? And she goes, oh, well, that's all very well and good. But do you care to explain to me how I can, how I'm meant to do that? No, I don't. It's not my cat. That's your problem. That's your pet. You didn't consult me when he decided to move in with your pet. You didn't consult me about whether your cat had free shitting rights in my garden. You deal with it. All right? And I'm saying it was selfish. It's a selfish choice you get in a cat if you're not just going to keep it in your house. And she's finally getting riled at this point. And she pipes off there. Excuse me. Perfect exit point. As always, whenever you hear that, I just go, you're excused. Walk off. Slam the door. Callum's one again. I mean, unfortunately, my rage wasn't quite fully quenched. I did actually have to open the door and shout a couple of things about her cat looking like a fat paedophile and stuff. And then I slammed it again, but before she could answer. So it was like a double win. But that's what I'm doing today now. It's action stations. We're at war. That cat 
is not coming back in here. Every time it comes in my garden today, I'm going to scare it out. I wouldn't hurt it. You know, I, I wouldn't want anyone to, hurt, to be hurt. But I will scare that little twat away. She should do this, but I'm going to have to.